Let's hear it for Brian Pearson. Golly. <laughs> He's done a great job. <clears throat> Strike up the band, clang the cymbals, beat the drums. Thank you for being here because you're all here for the right reason. We're all here for a tremendous cause. And I like to break life down this way. There's givers and there's takers. I like to ask my friends as I get older and older, why be the richest man in the cemetery? I mean, right? <laughs> So uh, let, let's spend some time, you know, giving back. And that's what we're about here tonight. So thank you for being here. It's already been a very successful cause. I love the back of the program. That's about $35,000, folks. So give yourself a round of applause for this wonderful cause. Yeah. And it's still coming in. And this auction doesn't stop until I'm through talking, you know. So I need to speed up. So finish the auction. 1889. I love to think about Guthrie and your rich history and the whole idea of 1889. I ran for governor once, and I used to talk about 1889 and the great land run right here in Guthrie, this part of the state. I talked about it everywhere I went. And I would ask one question. Go back to 1889, all those boomers and sooners that lined up for the land run, what did they all have in common? And my thinking was what they all had in common was nobody had it made. They all came here looking for a fresh start, a new beginning, a sense of opportunity to this territory right here. And I think it's still pretty much that way. I think you can still get a fresh start, a new beginning, a sense of opportunity right here in this territory known as Oklahoma. I really believe that. Particularly if you get a good, solid, quality public education. If you get a good education, you know, with your God-given talent and your work ethic, you can go as far as you want to go in this great country, in this great territory but you gotta have a good education to start with. So, that's what we're here about, and I gotta tell you, I love Guthrie, I've been here countless times, the best place to watch a high school football game on the whole planet is at The Rock. That's just the way it is. I believe it, you know? And, and I've been here again and again, uh, I've been to the, the Pollard, and I've been to all your schools, and I've been to the Pisonic Temple, I've been to all your schools, and I've been to Mineral Wells Park, is that the name of it? at a political function once many years ago, and I've been to all your schools, and uh, you see where I'm headed with that. And I've been to Cedar Valley Golf Course, and I've been to all your schools, and uh, you see what I'm talking about. Uh, I can't help but mention Cedar Valley. I've played golf out there with Jeff Herschel. Uh, Jeff Herschel is the person that taught me the man with the fastest golf cart never has to play a bad lie. I learned. I, I, I'm pleased to tell you here tonight that Jeff Herschel has just been named to the Senior Senior Golf Tour. On the Senior Senior Golf Tour, you play three holes, and whoever remembers their score wins. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations to Jeff. Jeff couldn't be here tonight, so I'll say this about him too. Jeff Herschel will laugh at a joke three times, when he hears it, when he tells it, and later when he first understands it. That's my, <laughs> that's my friend Jeff Herschel. Yes, it does take him an hour and a half to watch 60 Minutes, and Carol, tell him I said all that, you know, because he should have been here, you know. Carol's here. Happy birthday to Carol. And the truth is, yeah. And in all candor, thank you to Jeff and Carol, Richard Mildred, my campaign manager from all those races way back when. You guys always helped me right here in Logan County. And we always did good. And we won the Attorney General's race. We came up short in the Governor's race, but Logan County was all. Anyway, so that's why I'm here. I, I love Guthrie. I love Logan County. I've been here again and again and again. I've been here countless times. And I was here very recently with Jeff and Brian and Superintendent Simpson. And we really did go to all the schools. And I, I'm here to report back to you that I enjoyed my afternoon immensely. Because every, we started at Cotterill, and for those that haven't been to all your schools lately, you go into all these very crowded classrooms with all these beautiful children and all these very inspired teachers. So I gotta say they're doing pretty doggone good with tough conditions. But I get tired of going into a classroom in your community and seeing a teacher at the podium kind of like this up there teaching the class in a very inspired way and with a bucket right beside her catching the, the water dripping from the ceiling. I mean, it should be kind of embarrassing in a way. On the other hand, I went to so many classrooms where the kids were so wonderful and so beautiful and so engaged and the teachers were so dedicated and so inspiring, as I said, that I just got to say again, they're doing pretty doggone good with tough conditions. 
So what I want to say here tonight about all that is uh, let's hear it for the educators in the room, and we got a lot of students here too. Let's hear it for them. A round of applause if you don't mind. The best students and the best teachers in the whole state. You should be very proud of them. And my point is this. Every child needs a champion. Every child needs a champion. And I think for most of us, you know, our children find their champion hopefully in the home or the church or the synagogue or if not, you know, perhaps in the school as well. And I'm just saying here tonight, given what you're challenged with, you got great teachers, you got great students, you need better facilities. I'm just saying everybody here tonight can be a champion for the children, the school children of Guthrie, Logan County. So that's what you are and that's what you're here about tonight. And I'm very pleased to be a part of it. Just to be here to help create this event and work with you, Brian, and everybody else and help it raise some money along the way because it's what I like to do is raise money for good causes. And at this point in the presentation, I just got to tell you a little bit about who I am. Not that resume stuff, but I'm going to step out here, if you don't mind, just a second. I'll step out here like this. I got one of those fancy microphones, and I'm going to try to be funny. <laughs> it may not work. Thank you. Okay, okay. My family, we have a rich history in Oklahoma. In my family, I mean, we're the state of soil, oil, and toil, and land runs, and all that sort of my family came to Oklahoma in a covered wagon. And if you didn't see my family, you know, you don't know why the wagon was covered. You know. <laughs> um, I spent $100 to research my family tree, and once I saw it, I spent $500 just to cover it up. Okay, thank you. <laughs> this is all very clean material. Okay, so and I came from a very poor family. For, for breakfast, we ate popcorn. For lunch, we drank water, and for dinner, we just sat around and swelled up. You know, yeah. Okay, that's the worst one in the whole lot. I mean, I swear to you, I mean, it, it, it gets better from there. Okay, maybe. So I ended up going to high school at McLean High School. You mentioned that, thank you. McLean High School in North Tulsa. And, um, well, let's just say this. Um, I was an honor student. Yes, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. I was in juvenile court the whole time, like Judge Rob Hudson, like being in your court. Let's hear it for the judge here. He's firm but fair, folks. And he's in the final three. Is that news? Can I tell people that? He's in the final three for a judgeship at the state capitol on the Court of Criminal Appeals, the highest court in the whole state. Final three. So, congratulations. And Mary's a school librarian. I think that's pretty cool, being the school librarian right here in Guthrie. In any event, so I go to McLean High School, and in basketball, I went out for the basketball team. And they called me the Minute Man. I kept saying, Coach, can I play? And they said, In a minute, man, just sit down and be quiet. You know. <laughs> and my coach was Joe Shoulders. Seriously, that's Jim Shoulders' brother. So we spent every summer in Henrietta, for those that know the radios, the rodeo circuit. Okay, so then I go out for track. And the track coach says, Stay to the left and get back as soon as you can. And I've stayed to the left ever since, you know, <laughs> um, pr pr pretty much. And um, yeah. One day I was warming up for the hurdles and I backed into the pole vaulter and I won the broad jump. It was a real big day in my life. You know, you just, you had to be there to appreciate it. I'm just telling stories here as they come to me. I ended up going to college and uh, at the University of Tulsa, everybody said, he's gonna be a lawyer. Because underneath my yearbook picture, it said incompetent, irrelevant, and immaterial. They said, that guy's gonna be a lawyer. And I, I started off as a bankruptcy attorney, but I took all of my cases on contingency. So. <laughs> So, 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 so for the lawyers in the room, you, you see the problem, you, you, you know, if you win, you lose. Okay, so then, then I came up with this, I came up with a pretty good business card that said, if I can't get you out of jail, I'll get in with you. And that worked out pretty good. And when you flipped it over, it said, it's better to know the judge than it is to know the law, and I know both. You know, so anyway, that, that all worked out okay. <clears throat> I eventually, I eventually, Got married. My wife couldn't be here tonight because she teaches at U.S. Grand High School. She, too, is a premier educator on the front lines, like all the educators in this room. And she's there impacting young people's lives. So that's where she is tonight, U.S. Grand High School, South Oklahoma City, one of the biggest high schools in the whole state. But I'm very proud of her. In fact, I met her when I was giving the commencement address at Emerson Alternative School where she was teaching, and that's about 30 years ago. That's the inner city school in Oklahoma City for pregnant teenagers. So she was teaching there. I was invited to give the commencement address. 
And she actually introduced me. And so we, there you go. We met at the podium, which proves that politics can be fun. I mean, I'm out running for office, and I met my wife, Susan. We have a perfect marriage. I, I don't try to run her life, and I don't try to run mine either. <laughs> now, that's a good marriage, okay. You know what I'm saying. She's the CEO of the Turpin household, folks. She makes sure the Turpin trains run on time with our three kids. And we've raised three teenagers. They're, doing, they're, they're older than that now. But like Irma Bombeck said, once you've helped raise teenagers, you know how alligators eat their young. I mean, it's, it, no offense to the students that are here tonight, but it, it, it can be challenging for your parents and anyway, I need to move on. Let's see. Um, yeah. Here, I, since, since I'm not being paid anything to be here, and that's the honest to God truth, and that's what I want, I, I think I can give you some free advice. So for all the men in the room, this works for me. Five three-word phrases every man should use to ensure matrimonial bliss. Five three-word phrases every man should use to ensure matrimonial bliss. Works for me and Susan. Number one, I love you. Number two, you look beautiful. Number three, let's eat out. Yeah. Number four, can I help? And number five, it's my fault. You know what I mean, I, I'm just saying that works for me. Okay. Just free marital advice, what I know. So, okay, so eventually after all that, I got into politics, a little bit of politics. So let's, uh, let's see where that takes me here. My, my. So politics is not a spectator sport. You've got to get people involved. So my slogan was, it's time for Turpin. It's Turpin time. And everybody said, that's a stupid slogan. And, uh, and I said, who cares? I won. I'm Attorney General of the state of Oklahoma, for God's sakes. And all the people that worked for me wore a turpentine clock, a sandwich board clock, you know, all over the state. Sandwich board clock. Right here at the Rock, there were people outside wearing a clock that said turpentine on the face of the clock. And once I won, I got to tell you, the Capitol Press Corps said, wasn't it hard to get all those people to wear clocks? in front of all their friends and essentially humiliate themselves? I said, yes, it was. But all those that did, they became assistant attorney generals. And, uh, and, and one of them is here tonight. Richard Mildred, you've been with me through it all, folks. Yeah. Yeah, Richard Mildred, you ought to see him in a clock, folks. I mean, you were very good at it. So there's also something David Letterman said once, that politics is show business for ugly people. I, now, I don't believe that. Particularly here tonight. But here tonight, I don't believe that. But uh, that's just one letter. Thank you. Thank you. Table number one is helping me down here. I appreciate it very much. You guys are, you guys are pulling me through. Thank you. Okay. So, so what's my point? My point is this, that when I ran for governor, most people say my race for governor. I was attorney general, and I was proud to be your attorney general. But then I ran for governor, came up a little bit short. So what, 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 went, what went wrong, you know? So, so I'm just saying when I ran for governor, some people say I put the word goober in gubernatorial. I'm, you know, that's, it, things went wrong. Why? Because I had that famous press conference that some of you folks may remember where I announced my law and order plan, my crime plan. I said, you know all those pictures? You know all those people that have their picture on the post office wall? You know all those guys that have their picture on the post office wall? The most wanted list. I said, we're going to start keeping those guys when we're taking their picture. <laughs> yeah. We're going to keep the... Right. We're going to hang... We're going to keep those guys when we're taking their picture. We're not going to let them go anymore. Yeah, I mean, right? I mean, I just thought it was a common sense approach to law enforcement. And uh, anyhow, it, 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 didn't, it didn't work out so well. And any, uh, the last thing I want to say is, is about all that is politics is the second oldest profession in the whole world, but the results are the same in both. You know I mean, that's what, that's what some people say. I'm not, now, I'm not talking about the voters. I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the candidates. I'm talking about being a candidate. It's hard. As a candidate, you can't tell anybody your troubles. Half the people don't care. The other half, they're kind of glad you're having them. You know, so, so here's what, I'm almost through. My Uncle Ralph told me, my Uncle Ralph said, Mike, there's three things you should never do. He said, number one, don't ever try to kiss a girl that's leaning away from you. He said, number two, don't ever try to climb a fence that's leaning towards you. And he said, number three, don't ever run for city council or school board because you're so close to the people. You know, it's, it's a pretty tough business there. And uh, so those that do run for all those, I congratulate you for it, and I mean that sincerely. But what I learned out of all that, and here's my serious point, believe it or not, is Abraham Lincoln, in the great Lincoln-Douglas debates, Douglas gets up and says, Abraham Lincoln talks out of both sides of his mouth. He said, Abraham Lincoln is two-faced. And Lincoln gets up and says, I'll leave it to my audience here this evening. If I had two faces, 
Do you think I'd be wearing this one in front of you here tonight? <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. So, I mean, Abraham Lincoln had it figured out. So for our elected officials in the room, and no, for everybody in the room, you've got to keep life in proper perspective. You've got to have that quality of self-directed humor. Right? Self-directed humor. Not making fun of somebody else, just making fun of yourself. Otherwise, you perforate your stomach and you tighten up your chest. I mean, you got to laugh. There's a crying need for laughter in America today. Well, Roger said humor is a passport to the heart. You know, so I'm just saying you got to have the gift of self-directed humor. Shakespeare said, show me a man who never makes a joke, and I'll show you a man who stands as a joke to the whole world. Fair enough? Okay, now, that part where I try to be funny is over. And now I'm, and I'm, going, to, I'm, I'm going to step over here, and now I'm going to be very literary. I'm going to try to be literary. I'm going to act like I've written a book. I'm going to act like I'm an author. And Mary, you can understand where I'm going with this. But I am a bookie. I love books. I love bookstores. I love libraries. I love particularly independent bookstores. And I like physical books. I don't like those e-readers because I'm an older guy and I'm high touch, not high tech. You know, <laughs> my mother said a room without books is like a person without a soul. That's a little bit strong, but you know what I'm saying. You've got to have books around you. I believe in the ancient technology of ink on paper. Thank God for Gutenberg and the printing press. And I'll suggest this to you. After traveling the state, running for attorney general and governor and all that, I've been to every bean dinner, every fish fry, every Lions Club ladies night in the state of Oklahoma. I've been to every little diner. I've been to every, every town's got a place like Stables, you know, where you go in and you can just talk to everybody. You visit her. Every man, every woman is a book, is a volume. Every man, every woman is a book, a volume, if you will simply take the time to read them. And if you believe what I just said, this is a room full of bestsellers. I mean, seriously, just look around. I mean, you've got the leaders of Logan County, of Guthrie, right here tonight, in this wonderful facility. I mean, I'm having the time of my life. We're raising money. Fundraising must be fun. I mean, we're having fun raising money for a wonderful cause. Well, I believe that no man is an island and every book is a world. No man is an island, every book is a world. Books can take you anytime, anywhere. Uh, we started off at Cotterwell Elementary that day, and on the wall it said, a good book is like a warm hug. It's over there on the wall right now. It's the first thing I saw at Cotterwell, Mr. Superintendent, Mike Simpson. I mean, anyway, books. So i got to keep going because we got to finish the auction up here. I bought some books, and, and they're about Oklahoma authors. They're by Oklahoma authors. This is... The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. Uh, about 30 years ago, this became a movie. It's all Oklahoma. S.E. Hinton wrote the book. It's the classic coming-of-age book in the whole world. Oklahoma author S.E. Hinton, The Outsiders. The movie, about 30 years ago, filmed in Tulsa, Owasso, Collinsville. All based on a poem. All based on a poem by Robert Frost. The poem was Stay Gold. Have you ever heard the phrase, stay gold, pony boy, comes from that movie. Telling pony boy to hold on to the golden memories of your youth. Don't ever let go. The power of poetry. Thank you, Brian, you pointed out. I started a poetry club for my sons and all the young men that hung around the house back when. And uh, I would pay them a little money, a little gas money, and then memorize poems, long poems. Poems like If by Rudyard Kipling. Can you imagine in If by Rudyard Kipling, this phrase, you must meet triumph and disaster and treat both of the imposters just the same. You must meet triumph and disaster and treat both of the imposters just the same. When I lost the governor's race, I thought about that a lot. I believe in the power of poetry. To see the world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower. To hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. To hold infinity in the palm of your hand. What's that mean? I'm not sure. But those are beautiful words written 200 years ago. To hold infinity in the palm of your hand. When was the last time you held infinity in the palm of your hand? Maybe when you got married. Maybe when your first child was born. I'm going to break it down to Guthrie Public Schools. I was in classrooms where I saw teachers that were so dedicated, inspired. I feel like some of them 
as they change the trajectory of a child's life by their inspirational teaching. I don't know. They may hold infinity in the palm of their hand. Yeah, you know, I believe that. I believe we can make, make, make a living but also make a difference along the way. The power of poetry. That's all I'm suggesting to you here this evening. Helps keep life in proper perspective. Okay, I gotta move along, but my gosh, Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. 75th anniversary. The ultimate book about Oklahoma, about the underdog, about people that are on the downside of privilege. Heading out to California, go west, young man. I mean, during the Dust Bowl and such. Powerful book, and there's a great part in there 75th anniversary, Grapes of Wrath, John Steinbeck. It's a tough read, folks, but it's worth it. There's a part in the book where he's got to leave home, and Tom Joad is telling his mother he's got to leave. He said to his mother, wherever there's somebody struggling to be free, look into their eyes, Mom, and you'll see me. Wherever there's somebody struggling to be free, look into their eyes, Mom, and you'll see me. I mean, that inspires me. Power of words. That talks to me. <clears throat> words matter. Words matter. Fair enough? JFK once said about Winston Churchill, President Kennedy said about Winston Churchill, he mobilized the English language and sent it into battle. Wow. Churchill said what? If the British Empire lasts for a thousand years, men will still say this was their finest hour. The power of words. Don't even break the silence of a room with the sound of your voice unless you know what you're going to say. What, what's your theme? You know, what do you want to talk about? You know, words matter. Putting words together matter. I argue in front of the United States Supreme Court. Brian mentioned that. Imagine me in front of the United States Supreme Court. It's a death penalty case. Reverend Richard Douglas and his wife, Marilyn. Reverend Richard Douglas and his wife, Marilyn. Out of Okarchi, you might remember the case. He was a pastor there at Putnam City Baptist Church. <clears throat> Mr. Chief Justice, my name is Mike Turpin. I'm Attorney General for the State of Oklahoma. I'm here to advocate for the Reverend Richard Douglas and his wife, Marilyn. They're dead, they're gone, they're murdered, their eyes are closed, their lips are silenced. They could not be here today to speak for themselves, but I'm here to make sure, I'm here to make sure they don't become forgotten people in the criminal justice system. To make sure they don't become forgotten people in this system that we're all a part of here today. In front of the Oklahoma, pardon me, the United States Supreme Court, I got to say that. And I'm simply suggesting to you, I thought about that a lot. My theme was forgotten people. I knew if I was going to break the silence of a room with the sound of my voice in front of the United States Supreme Court, I was going to have a theme. And my theme was forgotten people. So that's all I'm saying, you know. Don't, don't, don't let the students of, of Guthrie Public Schools become forgotten children. You know, but we, we got a battle to fight. As the poet would say, we have miles to go before we sleep. That's what this is all about. That's what we're here about this evening. So you could tell I could go on forever and ever, but I only have just one more book. And it's, 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 it's all about Oklahoma. It's Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. Ralph Ellison was born in this state 100 years ago. And this book, Invisible Man, particularly in the African-American community, I mean, this is powerful. It's about, a, it's about an African-American in the 1950s and the life that he lived, the Invisible Man. Not the Invisible Man, just Invisible Man. And it, it starts off with him saying, I moved into the world armed with, a, with my mother's grit and wit. I mean, what more do you need than your mama's grit and wit? Anyhow, in my life, I want to share this one story with you that means so much to me in my life as an African-American mentor. So now I'm over in Muskogee, Oklahoma. I've been appointed district attorney by David Boren back when he was governor. The first two cases I prosecuted were the two judges. I prosecuted the special district judge. I prosecuted the district judge. One for embezzlement, one for bribery. It's a tough time in Muskogee County history. There's people here from Muskogee County. In fact, Representative Pfeiffer's mother was from Oklahoma, and I spoke at her commencement a few years ago. But I'm the district attorney in Muskogee, and a man named E.M. Guillory sits me down. E.M. Gill is an African-American gentleman. He's much older than I was at that point in time. He became my mentor and I was his protege. He dies when he's about 80 years old. And his wife said, you were special friends. Would you come give a eulogy for him at the Antioch Baptist Church in Muskogee, Oklahoma, presided over by Reverend Ben Noble? It seems like it was only yesterday. And so now I'm at the pulpit in a pretty much all black church. 
and eulogizing my good friend E.M. Guillory, I told this story that he had told to me years before. And it's one of the most important stories I've ever heard in my life, so I share it with you tonight in, uh, in closing. And uh, it's the story about a young child goes to an old wise man. In my life, that'd probably be my Aunt Mildred, by the way, you know. But uh, anyway, the young child goes to the old wise man. He said, old wise man, I wrote my name in the sand in the beach. I wrote my name in the sand on the beach, and the tide came in and washed my name away, and my name was gone. Old wise man, I carved my name in the, in the bark in the side of a tree, and soon the tree grew, and my name was gone. Oh, wise man, give me a reason for living and give me a reason for dying. What's this life all about anyway? Oh, wise man, I chiseled my name in the stone in the side of the mountain, and soon the wind blew and eroded my name away, and my name was gone. Oh, wise man, what really matters in this life? And the old wise man looks to the young child. He said, write your name. Inscribe your name in the hearts of your fellow man. And you, my child, shall live and endure forever and ever and ever. That's what life's all about. That's what life's all about right there. We all have the opportunity to leave our name in the hearts of other people just based on how we treat each other. Fair enough? I teach Sunday school at Emerson, uh, with my wife, and uh, actually it's a Presbyterian church. In Oakland. It's the confirmation class. And we teach the young men and women there. We, we teach them that turn your theology into biography. Turn your theology into biography. Whatever your theological beliefs are, make them part of the biography of your life. That's pretty heavy for eight, eighth graders. But what I break it down to, and I know we got some students here, that's why I wanted to say this. We, we tell those kids that how you treat each other right now, they'll remember for the rest of their life. And so uh, I close with kind of a funny story out of my own book, which you have a copy of, thank you. And it's a story in there where, where, where I'm in like ninth grade and Faye Taylor comes up to everybody in the hallway and said, you're invited to my party, you're invited to my party, you're invited to my party, you're invited to my party. And she looks at me and she goes, I clearly was not invited to the party. So, what's my point? The way you treat each other in middle school, in high school, Everybody remembers for the rest of their life. I'm talking to the students in the back of the room. You don't get to wipe the slate clean and start over. You know, treat each other with respect and dignity right now. I remember who was nice to me in elementary school and who wasn't. So you, you, you see what I'm saying. Everybody's got to be nice to each other. That's what the story is all about. And if you do that, just kindness and respect and all, you leave your name in the hearts of other people. The last thing in my book is my favorite Supreme Court judge, Sandra Day O'Connor. And she said, the secret to happiness is just three words. Work that matters. Work that matters. Thank you for having me here tonight for this wonderful cause we're all a part of. And congratulations to everybody in this room for doing work that matters. You're making a living, but you're also making a difference. In this great community of Guthrie that I've been to, I've been a hundred times. I love Guthrie. I love you. And thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you, folks. I got worn out. Yeah, I got worn out. Yeah, you laughed at my joke. Yeah, thank you. I'm proud of you too. Yeah. Okay.